Australian heavyweight boxer Paul Galen was out last week against Chris Tervaisky, and in the build-up to the fight, there was clearly no love lost between the pair. Galen had some strong opinions on his opponent before the fight and was less than complimentary when discussing his opponent's achievements so far in his career. Today, we're discussing Galen's first blow on his dumb opponent and why the fight offered him a second chance. First up, let's have a look at Galen's career so far. Described by some as the toughest man in Australia, Galen actually started his career as a rugby league player, turning out for the Cronulla Sharks for his entire career as well as the Australian national team. However, following a boxing charity event back in 2012, he discovered his love for the sport. The event was actually rugby league versus rugby union, with Gal going up against Kiwi union player Hikawera Elliott, bagging a three-round unanimous points win. A year later, he took on Liam Misson in another amateur charity event, winning via split decision. He then turned pro in 2014 whilst simultaneously Simultaneously still playing professional rugby, making his pro debut against Herman Ine Purcell, scoring a second round stoppage, and his pro boxing career went from strength to strength, remaining unbeaten across his first 12 fights, which actually spanned seven years. Not bad for a rugby league player. His first professional loss came from Justice Hooney via TKO in the 10th round last summer, but he got back to winning ways shortly after, beating Darcy Lusick in a third round stoppage, which brought us to last week's matchup with Chris Tervaisky, which Gall lost via unanimous decision after 10 rounds of action. However, after the fight, Galen revealed he has no plans to retire, saying age is undefeated, which his fans will be happy about. What have you made of Galen's boxing career so far? So, what did he say before the fight? Stay tuned to find out. Well, he probably won't be exchanging Christmas cards with Tervaisky anytime soon after describing his opponent as a soft male genitalia part, not in those words, obviously. The outburst was in response to Tervaisky's team pulling him out of a media appearance to hype their May 11th bout, which seemingly angered Gao. He then went in on his opponent again, claiming that he's done nothing, before again lambasting him for not turning up for his media obligations. Of course, media days before boxing fights are seen as a way to drum up interest in fights, leading to better paydays for fighters in some cases. So his frustrations are probably understandable. His opponent's team should shot back, saying their fighter had other commitments. But this was seen as pretty ridiculous in some circles given the fact he was fighting for the ANBF, Australasian and vacant Australian heavyweight titles. Galen also described his actions as dumb, before describing Tervaisky as weak for his lack of desire to bring attention to the fight, and given Galen's age and possible lack of top-level boxing opportunities going forward, his attitude makes sense. He described how difficult it is for someone of his age to keep busting his guts out, which suggested that he might actually be harboring plans to retire at some stage in the near future, and given his contribution to Australian sports for the past two decades, nobody could begrudge him that. What have you made of Gal's career? What else did he have to say pre-fight then? Let's see. Galen, who appeared alongside Nikita Tsuyu, brother of Tim and son of Kostya, and Harry Garside, admitted before the fight that the bout could in fact be his last. He suggested that had he won last week's bout, it could have been the perfect way to bow out. But of course, that didn't materialize, so he will now have some thinking to do. He mentioned before the fight that it would have been a pretty cool fight to win, and reminisced about his unsuccessful attempt for the belt last year, saying, Everything I've set out to do in life I've achieved. I got the opportunity to fight Justice Hooney for it, and obviously never won over 10 rounds. I've got the opportunity to do it again, so it's a second chance. He then explained that, of course, boxing's a hard sport, and even went on to say that more seasoned pros than himself, like Anthony Mundine, haven't won the Australasian title. Before saying how luck was involved for him when he was given the fight, he said, In a month's time, Hooney and Joe Goodall are fighting for a regional belt, and when you go fight for those belts, you've got to relinquish any Australian title. So he's relinquished the Australian title. So it just coincided, and there was a lot of luck involved. But to be able to fight for them and hopefully win them is going to be special. What do you guys think is next for Gal? Let us know. Needs of the upcoming Hooney and Goodall fight now. Stick around. Justice Hooney takes on Joe Goodall next month in what is set to be the biggest heavyweight bout on Australian soil in a century. Hooney was last out against our man, Gall, whilst Goodall knocked out Matthew McKinney in the first round in Minneapolis. And the fight between the two Aussies is set to be the biggest heavyweight bout down under since Jack Johnson beat Tommy Burns to become the first black heavyweight champ all the way back in 1908. Goodall's coach, Kevin 
Jonathan Barry explained that the fight is a massive opportunity for Joe to launch himself to world boxing and Australian boxing, as he believes he's been overlooked. And Goodall himself understands the significance, explaining that it's a massive opportunity for both fighters. It has been suggested that whoever wins this one could potentially be fast-tracked to a world title shot, with Goodall claiming that the winner will hold the torch for heavyweights in Australia. And Barry went on to say how Hooney impressed him as a youngster, after he noticed him when he was 17. He said, I started looking at Justice Hooney when he was lining up to enter the world championships as a junior. He was like 17 years old, and I saw a bunch of his fights, and I thought, this is a very, very good fighter. Whoever gets to win come June 15th will certainly move on to bigger and better things. Who do you guys think comes out on top? We're talking George Combosos Jr. next. Stay tuned. Combosos Jr. takes on Devin Haney in a couple of weeks at Marvel Stadium in Melbourne, with a chance to add Haney's WBO lightweight title to his own collection of belts. But George has revealed that during preparations for the fight, he's a fighter, not a lover. He said that ahead of the bout, he's not indulging in any sexual intercourse with the missus whatsoever, as he doesn't want to get distracted from his goals. He joked, well, I've got three kids already, so it's probably doing me a favor. But of course, there is a serious aspect to the idea. He explained that these fights can often come down to the 0.1% and due to the fact that no one has ever given him anything, he doesn't want to jeopardize his chances of winning, including any extracurricular activities. Andy went on to say that his desire was all about legacy, revealing, legacy is what drives me. My country drives me, but my kids as well, my family. My motivation comes from them and showing that with hard work, dedication, discipline, that anything can be achieved. He finished by saying that he is the perfect role model, not only for his own children, but children all over Australia and throughout the world. What did you guys make of Combosos' words? Let us know below. And finally, we're talking about Michael Zarafa. It's been suggested this past week that Aussie favorite Michael Zarafa's comeback could in fact be against Mexican star Jamie Munguia. The two teams held talks last week and Zarafa has claimed that if they can get a deal done, he would be on the next flight out. However, it is thought that there could be a little too much going on with that fight and if it does go ahead, it might not be for a while yet. Zarafa stopped Isaac Hardman last month to become the world number two IBF contender and it has also been mooted that a potential fight with Esquiva Falqueo could be in the works. He said, from having no fights, now I've got Manguia, I've got Triple G, and I've got Falqueo, so this is what we want for Australian boxing. Of course, any of these fights would be huge for Australian boxing. And after explaining how hard his career's been to date, fighting so many tough opponents, he went on to say how he believes he can shock the world again. Zarafa has even suggested a potential blockbuster all-Aussie fight with Tim Tsuziu, who could be on the cards. Explaining that he's not sure if Tim has the skills to make it overseas, he then said, as much as me and Tim have our differences, but Timmy brings it home, man. If he gets the opportunity, hopefully we get behind each other because that's what we need. What do you think is next for Zarafa? As always, thanks for stopping by today, and remember to join us next time for all sorts of other cool bits and pieces. Bye, guys.